All right, so this is section 1.4, uh, titled Types of Functions and Their Rates of Change. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and see if that helps us see a little bit better when, uh, when you have the videos. All right, so we start with some definitions. Uh, first, a constant function uh, is of the form f of x equals b, where b is a constant. A constant is a number like 2 or negative 1 or 5 or something like that. So like uh, f of x equals 2 or f of x equals 5. Keep in mind that f of x can be replaced with y. So an equation of the form y equals 5 uh, also represents a constant function. A linear function is one of the form uh, f of x equals mx plus b, where m and b are constants. And again, that just means numbers. Like, for example, we could have f of x equals 2x minus 1, or f of x equals 1 half x plus 2. Uh, m is the constant rate of change, otherwise known as the slope, and we'll come back to that. And b is the initial value. And so uh, keep in mind again that uh, this could also be y equals, right? And so we think of this as y equals 2x minus 1. If you remember, that's uh, the slope right there. So the slope would be whatever is right there, too. All right, the slope of a line containing the points x1, y1, and x2, y2 is given by uh, the slope is the change in y over change in x, which is, uh, can also be found by uh, the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and some of you may be familiar with that. Uh, number four, the x-intercept, or an x-intercept, is the point x0 on the graph of f. x0, by the way, is a, uh, a point on the x-axis, right? Any one of these points, like 2, 0, 3, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, uh, all of those could be x-intercepts, okay? Uh, y-intercept is a place where the graph crosses the y-axis or touches the y-axis, and it is of the form 0y on the graph of f, okay? So 0y is, for example, 0, 3. So that point is a, could be a y-intercept if your graph goes through, uh, touches that point. All right, the zero of a function is any value c such that f of c equals zero, okay? Again, remember, uh, what does it mean to say f of z equals zero? That means the point c comma zero is on the graph uh, of f. And so c comma zero looks a lot like x comma zero, and in fact, it's really the same thing. So the zero of a function can be found if we know an x-intercept, or an x-intercept can be found if we know a zero, okay? Uh, they're not the same thing, but they, uh, they, they are related. So uh, a zero is just a number, whereas an x-intercept is a, uh, it's the coordinates of a point, is a point. Uh, Nonlinear function is a function whose rate of change is not constant, all right? So rate of change is not constant means it doesn't have a slope like this one that's going to stay uh, the same number, and so it cannot be written f of x equals mx plus b because m and b are constants. That means uh, it's the same number or the number stays the same. All right, number one, find the slope of the line through those two points. I'm gonna leave that for class, so we'll see that in class. Uh, and most of you are familiar, and you, you can work it out before you get to class. If not, we'll see it in class. Number two, the distance d in miles that a train is from a station after x hours is given by the formula d of x equals 150 minus 20x. And we're gonna do two things, calculate d of five, and then find the slope. So I'm gonna work out d of five, so d of five, d of 5 and interpret the result is going to be 150 minus 20 times minus 20 times 5. So I'm just going to plug in the 5 and that'll be 150 minus 100 which is 50. Okay and then how do I interpret that? Well I just go back up here and find out what it is. So what is 5? Five? 5 is the number of hours yeah, and what is D? D is the distance, the miles that a train is from a station. So after five hours, the train is 50 miles from the station. Oops, I'm sorry, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not letting you see. So after five hours, the train is 50 miles from the station. That's the interpretation, okay? All right, and B we will do in class. All right, so uh, some examples of nonlinear functions. So linear functions are, are, are named linear because when you graph them, they're in the shape of a line. Uh, nonlinear functions are not in the shape of a line and also do not have a constant rate of change or they do not have a slope or a constant slope. I'm sorry, a constant slope. All right, so... Uh, so some of those, and we have uh, uh, the graph in the symbolic form. So the first one's a parabola, 
which has a symbolic form f of x equals x squared. And some of you might have seen that before. And anytime you have x squared and there's no higher power, it's always in the shape of a parabola, right? Anything that you add to that, like if you were to say f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 1, that would just move the parabola somewhere, okay? But it would be a parabola. F of, uh, the second one, f of, f of x equals the square root of x. Notice that's a curve. It's not a, it's not a line. It's a curve. And that's the square root function. This one is the uh, squaring function. This is the square root function. It's of that form. Notice, because we not, cannot take the square root of negative values of x, there is no graph on the negative side over here. Okay? Uh, so when we see this, we say that the, the function is undefined there. That means there's no picture of the graph there. It's undefined. All right. The third one is f of x equals x to the third, known as the cubing function. And finally, uh, the last one is... Uh, the absolute value function, which is in the shape of a V, okay? All right, so uh, those are some examples where rate of change is not constant. All right, uh, let's go on to uh, determine whether the data are linear or nonlinear. And so how do we do that? Well, linear, remember, is going to have a constant slope, and nonlinear is not going to have a constant slope. That means from point to point, if it's linear, it'll keep the same slope, but if it's not linear, the, the, the slope will change uh, somewhere. Okay, so how do we check that? Well, we can use the, the, this formula between every two points, or we can use a change in y over change in x, and I'm going to use that here. And then how do we determine that? Let's find out. Okay, so I'm going to find the change in x between these two points, and from negative 2, it goes up to 0, so it's a positive 2 up. From 0 to 1, it goes up 1. Notice I use the positive to indicate up, and I'll use negative to indicate down. Uh, from 1 to 4, it goes up 3. All right. The y goes this way. From 5 to 2, it goes down 3. From 2 to negative 1, it goes down 3. From negative 1 to negative 4, it goes down 3. So now, how do we construct the slopes? Remember, it's change in y over change in x. So it's kind of upside down from this, because these are the changes in y, and these are changes in x. So this slope here is negative 3 over 2. This one is negative 3 over 1, and this one is negative 3 over 3. And you'll notice each of those is actually a different number. Negative 3 over 2 is just negative 3 over 2. Negative 3 over 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 over 3 is negative 1. So none of those are the same, or they change, so therefore it is nonlinear. We would say this is nonlinear. All right, and then this one we'll do in class but you've seen how we did it already, and if you want to do it before class, that's fine. Let's continue to the back of the page, or to the second page, and we're going to talk about uh, increasing and decreasing functions. So uh, you can read that on your own. I'm not going to read it because it, it won't uh, really make a whole lot of sense to us just reading it. So increasing means that when, you, uh, when you're moving from left to right, the graph is going upward, and decreasing means that when you're going from uh, left to right, the uh, graph is coming downward, okay? So, uh, what kinds of questions are, are we uh, supposed to answer or know how to answer? The following. Determine intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing. Uh, and if we don't have a graph, then we maybe want to sketch a, uh, the graph just to get an idea. All right, so here we have a parabola. So, I'm going to read from left to right. So, increasing from left to right, remember. So, if I read from left to right... Where's my uh, graph going? So if I start here, my graph, notice as I go from left to right, it's going up. And then it comes back down as I cross. X equals negative 2 comes back down. Okay, so, so there's two different things that happen. One, it's going up, but then it's coming down from left to right. Okay, so where's it going up? I'm going to shade that with a, with a blue. It's going up here. And then right here, it changes direction. Now I'm going to shade with the red because it's going down. Okay? So I've determined where it happens, but how do I answer that? And it turns out you answer the values of x where this is happening. So the values of x where it's going up go up to here and includes all these values of x. And the values of x where it's going down start at negative 2 and includes all these values of x. Okay. So, uh, I answer two different things. I answer where is it increasing, and I answer where is it decreasing. 
decreasing. Okay, so it's increasing on only one interval uh, from negative infinity all the way up to negative 2. Uh, and then should I include the negative 2? And uh, some books will say included, some books will say don't. I don't. And uh, and we can come back to that, but it doesn't it doesn't it's not really uh, doesn't really matter to us. Okay, where is it decreasing? Well, uh, all these values of x. Notice again we're answering these are values of x from negative two to positive infinity. Uh, from oh from negative negative two yeah, from negative two to positive infinity. All right. If you do put a bracket, if you include it, that's okay. It, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. It's not really too important. All right. Uh, and uh, let's start off number seven, and then I'm going to stop there and let you guys finish the rest on, on your own. And again, we're going to see them in class. So if you don't get to finish them on your own, then we'll see them in class. All right. So I'm just going to color code. So as I go from left to right, the again, I'm going from left to right on the x-axis. The graph is increasing, gets to here, and then it's decreasing. And now again, it's going to turn up and it's going to be increasing up to there and then it turns back down and now it's decreasing okay so when we answer the increasing portion it turns out there's two different places so I'm going to answer two different uh, intervals and so don't forget you want to write union and if you don't write the union that's fine you're just identifying two intervals uh, and then decreasing and it's decreasing on the red interval. And don't forget, you're, you're answering about the x-axis. So like the red part on the x-axis covers that much. And the red part over here on the x-axis covers that way. Okay? So the other part is blue. And this other part is blue. Right? And again, notice the red, the red portion also has two intervals. And so you're going to write two intervals. Okay, so that you will have to, uh, that union symbol will, will help to remind you that there's two intervals. And this one we're going to leave to, to do either in class or if you do it before, that's fine. We'll still do it in class. Okay, that's... Uh